Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I wanted to thank you guys for watching and being patient and coming to this channel and supporting me in these videos. It's been super exciting and really fun. So I thank you for that. Now this video is another celebrity channeled video and I wanted to preface it before I started to speak on what I got when I meditated on it by saying that the information I get is not based on the recent documentary that was released on Michael Jackson because I know the fans get just bent out of shape if you say anything against they feel is against his legacy and what they know of him to be true and that's fine but this reading is not based on anything to do with that documentary. I'm putting that aside and I'm looking into the energy that I pick up around Michael Jackson and somebody asked me what does looking into mean and how it works for me is when somebody asks me can you do a video on person a person b or whatever the case may be i will tell them i'll look into it that's my way of saying i am going to go off on my own do my meditative running and get the information i get as i see that it comes through so i write it down or however it is that it happens for me i'm looking into it. Keep in mind that mediums and psychics all work differently and none of us come to our information in the same way because it depends on how our bodies harness the information, how we respond to the stimuli that we're receiving, so the pictures and images, how we choose to convey the message because remember we are speaking in a different language between here and there and so it comes into so many different factors and we are going to come across differently. That doesn't bother me. I embrace all elements of the psychic world and anybody's intuitive insight into anything, whether I agree with it or not, I'm always interested in listening to it. So we all work differently. That's the beauty of this work. I don't look at it as a provable or not provable thing. That's not what I'm trying to do. I know there's a lot of evidential mediums out there that really strive that point and I understand that. But mine is to pick up on the energy and to illustrate the flow of that energy through the path that the person's soul takes. That's how I choose to do my reading. So I don't need to be cut and dry or scientific. I need to experience the flow of that energy and describe it as best I can to the people that are interested in listening to it. And again, that's why I chose to do this work because it really suited an experience for the kind of the untapped energy around people and a different perception on things. So when I'm reading about little Michael Jackson of the Jackson Five, that great group back in the day, which I totally loved. I'm a fan of like five-year-old Michael Jackson and his brothers. I love that Motown music. Anyway, Michael Jackson, when I'm reading the energy, I am really interested in finding out what he was about. So as I'm focusing on the early life of Michael Jackson, I'm getting this overwhelming dominant presence of his father. And I think we all know this. I think we've all seen news clips and we've heard stories from the other kids in the family about Joe Jackson. Now, what I, how I feel Michael perceived his father is I feel like he really believed what his father said. There was kind of an idealization from Michael as he looks towards his father. So he wanted to make his father proud. He wanted to please his father. Michael recognized really early on, this is showing me the intellect of this young child as he is stepping into the front person on the Jackson 5. What he's showing me is that he could articulate and understand what his father wanted to convey. So the Jackson 5 is the intellectual creation of Joe Jackson based on how he viewed the children in his family. And he viewed Michael as the leader of the older boys in the family because he recognized that children were sellable. Michael's kind of showing me that he was from a very early age on seen as the money generator in the family because he was pleasing to look at, pleasing to listen to, and he had this talent and 
Here's the kicker. He could follow direction. He knew instinctually and could mesh with the energy of his father's thinking. This is an intuitive thing is what he's showing me. So as a young child, he could intuitively pick up on the energy of what his father wanted and what he needed to have happen in order to sell the Jackson 5 as a singing group, a new singing group, and bring that out there. He's also showing me that his mother was a strong force around him. And as much as the media has put Catherine as a victim, which he says his mother hates because she is no victim. She stood up to Joe Jackson. She stood up to a lot of people and she is not a victim. I think Michael really liked his mother, but his mother was disapproving on a lot of different levels about Michael. Okay, that's kind of the way he's making me feel. Not in a negative, I don't like that kid kind of way, more along the lines of holding him to a higher standard in the family unit is kind of how it's going. She let Joe kind of run the family because Joe is the one that had the connections and had the, 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 the street smart with which to get those connections. And Joe made a deal very early on. Michael's showing me a paper. He's about five years old. This is before the Jackson five. I think it, they started when he was six or seven, possibly seven. It may have been five. I'm just not familiar actually if it was five or seven, either way, he was a small child, but he's showing me that it was Joe that signed away Michael's life. Okay. So there's like, I'm being shown a paperwork over here that's being signed. And it's like, this kid will do what you want him to do. And I'm speaking performance wise, nothing else, nothing more. And of course, I'm going to ask about the abuse issues, but here's something I get. And I'm just, my mind is being switched. I want to know if Joe Jackson abused those kids. I believe he did, but my mind is being switched to Michael Jackson's death. And here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to get right to the point. He's saying that the people want to know the point. They want to know the point. So he is telling me and directing me, he's kind of bossy on the other side, kind of controlling. Um, so I'm going to say he was a controlling young man, a controlling person all the way through his life. So that is one personality that I don't think we're used to. But speaking about Michael's death, and I'm going to get straight to the point with that, he did not die the way it was presented in the media. That's bullshit. That's not true. He did not die that way. I realized that he probably did have a heart attack because we all have to die from something. So when somebody says it's a heart attack or they lose their breath, this is obvious. Often we will lose our breath or have a heart attack because there's really only a couple of ways other than being murdered. Michael Jackson is showing me really strongly that he did not die from the drug overdose that they suggest that he died from. Okay, so they tried to make him into this closet medicated drug addict. He's pissed about that because that is not how he died. He didn't trust them. He didn't want to trust them. They took him out and by they, I'm not sure who he means yet, but what he's saying to me is he did not die from Profifol the way that they said. He's kind of giving me the face like, do you really think that I had somebody come and put an anesthetic into my body and trusted them when I'm such a control person. So the answer is no. Now that's really interesting because I really did think you have to be some kind of a jackass to have a doctor inject shit into your body and trust that they're going to wake you up when you're worth so much money because like human error, if you've ever asked anybody, I mean, unless you have five or six different people there administering the anesthetic, like you have an anesthesiologist and then a backup and then a family member that you trust or a friend, I don't think I'd go down that road because I don't even think, I mean, there's too many accidents in a hospital and you have like 25 checks and balances. He's basically looking at me like I'm a crazy bitch for even thinking that he died of the profile. By, by that, I mean, I'm getting the impression like, like I just see an image like, are you that stupid? And I can kind of hear the wording in my head. He did not die that way. That is a setup. That is not the way he died. Now, Michael's showing me several months before he passed away and I'm getting this right now. I didn't get this prior to, but since I mentioned his name, he's kind of sidetracked my energy. So it's a flow that I'm seeing. Michael did not die from that. Okay. That's, I, I'm going to say it. I can't prove it. No one's going to listen to me. I'm just some psychic and they all think we're crazy. So no one's listening to me about that. But what I am getting is that he was a fearful of his life. Now you look at all the things around him when he does these crazy stunts, the, the over plastic surgery. And I'm going to get into that because that I did actually dream the other night, which was weird, what that was about. And I'm going to sound maybe a little bit insane when I say that, but Michael did not, um, die with the, 
with the anesthetic. He's basically saying to me that that's not something he allowed them to put in his body. So there's, there's knowledge that isn't there about that is what he's saying to me. The other thing that I'm being shown is up until the point that he passed, and I'm talking probably the three years prior to his passing, he was on vigilant hyper guard. Like who's trying to take me out? He trusted no one. What he is saying to me is he's asking me a question. Okay. In my head, I'm just getting this real quick. He's saying to me, I was how old when I died? Okay, so I'm actually older than he was at the point that he died. So he was 50 or 51, I think 50, or turned 50 going towards 51, or 51 going towards 52, whatever. So I know the kind of energy I have, and I am a very hyper person, okay? And if you get coffee in me, I'm even more hyper, and I'm sure if I did some kind of speed pill, I'd be even more hyper. I'm not gonna do that, but if I did, I would be. Now he's asking me, to think reasonably, and I get this really strong. He's saying, think logically. He's saying, if I'm gonna do 250 shows or one show a week for 52 months, I forget which it is, but he's showing me like the calendar and a show. So all of these shows down the calendar at his age in his 50s with his health and his fragility is the word that I'm hearing coming through. Although, I mean, he was always skinny, but I thought that was like, um, like a girl thing, like how girls want to be thin and dancers want to be thin. I thought it was like that. But he's ask, actually asking me to think about him being a fragile person and that fragility being able to perform all of those shows. And then I see this, quiet. He's asking me to think, and I see paperwork. He's asking me to, to, to ask you guys who would benefit from him not doing those tours and not being able to perform. Who would benefit? He's saying, who would benefit? So there was insurance on Michael Jackson, the highest paid performer. Um, he was gonna go out and do those shows. So he's asking me to look at the people that booked him on those shows. And he's asking me to look at the insurance company and if I remember correctly, and I'm not sure that I do, but I wanna say Lloyd's of London, he's asking me to directly go to the insurance company. The paperwork between the company that hired him and the company that insured him, and he's saying to me, do you think I'm going to take Profofol on purpose after signing that document? And then he takes my mind right to his mother and says, my mother speaks because she doesn't have access to my money fully. So when you're listening to Katherine Jackson speak, she is speaking from the perspective of being someone who had a child that was a huge money earner that she doesn't have access to his money. I don't know why he's pointing that out right now. Maybe he's trying to say what she says is based on the fact that she may not get money if she doesn't say what they want her to say. I, I'm not sure really exactly what that's about, but he points over there and then points over here. Okay, so Katherine Jackson's here, the children are here, the other family members are here, okay, as far as I see them. So everybody's in separate places based on where they fit and based on their position within the financial system that is Michael Jackson. So he's basically setting it up to me to show me, oh, 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 oh my gosh, okay. I hear this as well, and I'm gonna say this and y'all are gonna get pissed off at me because I'm gonna sound like a racist bitch. Okay, so I never could understand why he wanted to alter his appearance to that extreme. I get it, I get it if you don't wanna have a big nose or I get it if you, like I bleach my hair. I get all of these things, okay? If you wanna look a certain way because you like the way that person looks or your family member or you don't like the fact that you have an ethnic nose or you want an ethnic nose or I don't know what, whatever it is you're doing. But what I'm getting right now, and I'm seriously asking you to consider this, I am actually hearing in my head, do you think they're going to let a black man walk away with this money? So I'm thinking, that I'm just showing you how it works the way that I work it. I'm saying right now as I'm hearing that, well, you were a black man and you did have that money, at least by birth. I don't know what you look like at the end of your life because that to me was more of, um, self-abuse, extreme self-abuse, like an anorexic not eating and then thinking that they're fat. That's how I looked at Michael Jackson's plastic surgery. It was very disturbing to look at and almost painful actually. Um, so I felt very badly that he looked that way. 
Um, not that he wasn't who he was, but it's extreme. And I feel badly for anybody that is trying to fix themselves or erase themselves. I do feel there was another motive for that though. And I feel the motive was to make him look crazy, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Anyway, as I'm jumping forward into this expression, what I'm feeling, and I hope I'm getting this correct, is I'm feeling that Michael Jackson actually earned the money. He, he made the money. And at the end of his life, when he was not going to, this is how he's making me feel. I was not going to be able to live up to those performances that they had sold tickets on and they had uh, prop me up, okay? And they had made you believe that I was going on a world tour, the last world tour of Michael Jackson. It's almost sarcasm as if he's rolling his eyes. He's basically making me feel, do you think they were gonna let me have that money? <clears throat> so the answer is, why didn't you have a will? This is me saying in my head, why didn't you have a will? And I'm hearing, I did have a will, that will was removed. So Michael Jackson had a will. The will was shifted after his death. At the point of his death, now this is how I'm being made to feel again, at the point of his death, the sales record goes up, the money goes up, the money lost in the tour tickets explodes because Michael Jackson's fan base is like nothing we've ever seen. When you have that kind of creative genius like Michael Jackson and you have a performer that was supposed to go on stage tour for 52 weeks, one city, one tour a week for the entire year. That's a huge amount of ticket sales. I mean, he was a massive star. So to, to know behind the scenes that you've announced that and that you can't live up to that, the machine, as he puts it, was invested in continuing the money flow generated by his name. What better way to do that than to have him pass away? And as I said, about six months prior to his death, I picked that information up. I actually heard it from a voice outside of me, which means it was already in the works. So when I pick up the energy around Michael Jackson, suggesting that he was watching who was around him and he was like in fear for his life, so to speak, like he didn't trust anybody around him. And he's even pointing to his parents like, I trust them, but not enough to let them around me. I don't, he's talking about eating something like I'm not going to eat. He was, he was an awfully thin person, but as I said prior, I thought this had to do with like a woman wanting to keep her weight down or a dancer entertainer wanting to look thin on film. It's not unheard of. Um, I know nowadays it's the other side. It's a flip side where people want to be really big and, you know, uh, gain weight. So he was back in my generation where everybody's like, Oh, I want to lose weight. But all of that aside, he's showing me that he was afraid to eat. It was about the food. So when you see him going, he's showing me, remember all those weird um, TV things where they tried to make him look crazy and he was wearing blankets over his head. His kids were wearing blankets and blanket was wearing a blanket. He's basically showing me he was doing this to block them from being able to tell what he was doing. So the crazy persona was in a response. He's not crazy. He's actually not crazy. I always thought that he was, um, you know, a little bit off because of the celebrity, but that's not what I'm feeling right now. Now, it's really interesting because I go right back to early childhood again and the control that he endured. And I'm talking, I'm, I'm flipping right from the point of his death back to early childhood. And I'm going back to the point in his childhood where he's showing me that he was in fact abused on all different levels, sexually, physically, mentally, verbally, but he's showing me all of the kids standing in a line. And when you show me that and I see their faces and they're looking down and I see the face of shame, I know that it happened to all of them equally. He's also showing me that his sexual predilection was partially formed in early childhood with what he witnessed his siblings doing. So there's some kind of sexuality that was introduced to him at an early age. I believe he's saying through his brothers, so the observation of it, but he wasn't supposed to be watching. So I don't know if he spied on them or it was like deliberate, it was happening in front of him. Now, when I ask why his mother didn't stop the abuse, I'm being shown that this was something that they believed should happen in order to structure the family. So I'm seeing this as a family structure, as in this abuse took place, the mother knew, but it took place based on 
Like this is what we do in order to achieve a successful family. This is how we respond. This is how it happens. This is what happens. Um, I would almost say that they, it, it, it kind of has a religious undertone and I can't help but think of cults in society where they have, you know, the father and the father is the one that brandishes this kind of control over the children, whether they be male or female in order to get people to line up. And the woman is complicit because she kind of was used to it in her own upbringing. That's how I'm being made to feel. So I feel that that went on. So I'm asking Michael about the child abuse allegations and I'm talking about it and it feels like he's going to be more than open about his experience about this. And again, he shows me that accordion paper with the many different faces of Michael Jackson. And he's showing me immediately, I go to that interview that they did. I guess it was included in the documentary, but I believe that I saw it not connected to the documentary years ago. It might've been in the nineties. He goes right to that one documentary where he's with Martin Bashir and he's saying, I would never hurt a child. One of Michael's personalities, the way that he's showing me on the accordion paper is exactly that. There's a feeling of like, I am this person, I am not that person. And I feel very strongly like Michael was not always in control. This is no excuse, I'm not making an excuse. But I feel like he wasn't always in control of what was happening and what was going on with him. So it's interesting. I, I feel like I, I'm looking at the plastic surgery connected to the abuse allegations and I'm feeling like every time he changed his face, there was an attempt to get back to who he was. So I almost feel, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this, I feel like Michael Jackson was actually through childhood experience, through abuse himself, and through some kind of hypnotic manipulation, which he didn't have full awareness of. I feel like different hypnotic personalities came out around him. So when I'm looking at the energy of Michael Jackson, I feel like there were so many different facets to him, like the accordion I was showing you, how that, how that, um, how the personalities moved in and out. Just like if you pulled a paper that was folded with different little pictures. Remember when you were a kid, you would do that. Okay, I feel many different personalities with Michael Jackson. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a follow-up video and I promise I'm gonna do a follow-up video. And I'm so glad when you guys tune into my channel, it's like the best thing ever. But I'm gonna do this follow-up video and really delve into the abuse allegations and what people said about Michael Jackson. I just wanted to get the context for his energy on the other side. So that's the first thing that I started exploring. And once again, my name is Sloan from sloanbella.com.